So I happen to be living close to a really cool place. It's the biggest cemetery in Sweden and it's called Skogskyrkogården, which means forest cemetery. And it is a really big cemetery situated in a forest. And not only that, it's really beautiful. It's on the UNESCO World Heritage List because of its beauty, its architecture and its landscaping. It's a really unique place. And I love go walking there because it's just a short walk from where I live. And it's also been a really long time since I did some night photography. And I thought it would be really cool to do some night photography at the cemetery to create a spooky and a bit cozy mood, maybe in the photos. But not only that, today it happens to be All Hallows Eve, uh, which means that everyone goes uh, to the cemetery and lights a candle. Uh, so we will have a lot of lit candles all over the graves. And not only that, <laughs> today is also full moon, uh, or at least 99 point something percent full moon, because the full moon is tomorrow. So it will also be some uh, ambient light coming from above, from the moon. Unfortunately, I think the sky is not totally clear tonight, but at least we will get some moonlight, uh, I think. So, uh, I think the circumstances are perfect for a photo walk late at night at the Forest Cemetery. So that's what I will do tonight, and you will come along with me. So these are some pictures from last year. Uh, as you can see here in the information down below, I used a 20mm lens. Uh, I picked this lens because I figured uh, when you do any kind of landscape photography, it's uh, very often useful to have a wide angle. But I wasn't happy at all with how the images turned out. Uh, sure, you get a feel for the place and you get a feel for the beauty of the trees and all the lights and everything, but the photos, uh, they lack a subject and there aren't any like leading lines that uh, make the photos interesting. They just look a bit messy and a bit boring, uh, if you ask me. So this year I'm gonna try a different approach. To get the photos with more of a subject in them, I'm gonna use a 50mm lens. And besides the lens, of course you need to bring a tripod when you go out photographing at night. Because the exposures will be uh, several seconds long. And as you can see in this picture last year I tried snapping a few photos without a tripod and that works to some extent when you have a 20mm lens uh, with f1.4 in max aperture. But uh, this year I'm bringing a tripod. And besides the camera, the lens and the tripod, it's always very good to have a flashlight with you. Uh, if not to see where you're going, it's good to use it to illuminate uh, uh, your subject a bit. Oh, and another thing that can be really helpful when you're doing night photography is a headlight. And I do apologize in advance because it will be very grainy <laughs> with this little camera in the dark. So entering the cemetery late at night with all the candles lit is a really breathtaking view. I'm really sorry that my little action camera couldn't capture it the way it really looked when I was there. I began shooting some uh, random photos just of uh, like wider shots with uh, several gravestones uh, in them. But as you can see they aren't really that interesting. It's the same problem as last year I quickly identified that when you have no clear subject in the photo, they, they, the pictures just look messy. And also I noticed that it's really hard to get the white balance in the right place. Uh, these photos looked a little bit yellow and um, if you turn down the yellow tone they, they look boring in a different way, so it's, it's really hard. I began experimenting with uh, several different kinds of shots to try to see uh, what works and I quickly identified that if you do like portraits of individual headstones that might look 
a bit more interesting than the shots over several or hundreds of headstones. Uh, I quickly realized another problem and that is uh, how to get exposure right because when you have complete darkness and a few bright lights as in the conditions I was in at the cemetery uh, the dynamic range becomes huge so you really need to think carefully what you're going to expose for and uh, as you can see the uh, highlights will be a little bit overexposed no matter how you do it Another thing I quickly discovered is that manual focus is definitely the way to go if you're shooting in complete darkness like here. It's quite easy to get uh, the focus in the right place if you're using manual focus and uh, you just need to make sure that you have the settings right in your camera. Uh, there is a setting on I think most mirrorless cameras that allows you to see as much as possible of the little light that is there uh, so that you can get a focus in the right place. It means that uh, what you see in the viewfinder will not be exactly what you, the image will look like but it will help you focus and you take a shot uh, with a certain uh, amount of uh, exposure time and then you just look at it and see if it needs to be brighter or not and then you take another shot with a different uh, exposure time and that's how I went about it and uh, it, I was pretty happy with the results uh, but as you can see these uh, headstones they I mean the pictures look okay but they are not like wow fantastic so I was actually a little bit disappointed at this point with the results so far uh, but I continued to, to walk uh, and enjoy the views on the cemetery and trying to find new ways of taking photos uh, and new uh, perspectives and angles to make interesting shots of the headstones. What I was aiming for was like mm, a scene from a scary movie or a cover of a horror movie DVD or something like that. And finally I started to nail these shots. This one I'm particularly happy with. This is one of my favorite shots from this night. This is another favorite of mine. Uh, this one has exactly the ambience I'm looking for. Um, the feeling of like complete darkness at the graveyard. Uh, I think these these shots are very like cozy and uh, special. Like they they could be from some kind of horror movie or something. So I'm happy with how they came out. Another thing I realized is that it is very important to either have uh, some kind of wireless uh, shutter button uh, or that you use some kind of delay when you take the photos so that uh, you're not mm, shaking the tripod in any way when you're taking the photo. I find it very convenient to not bring any remotes or anything like that but instead just use a self timer of 2 seconds. Uh, so I press the shutter button, wait for 2 seconds and then it begins taking the photo. It was very cloudy but the moon uh, came out uh, like one or two times and it was really moody and a nice scene. This is another photo that I'm really happy with, uh, I think I managed to capture the the feeling that I was after. I mean this could almost be like a cover of a Metallica album or something. And this one I'm even happier with. This is also one of my favorite photos from this night. Uh, the light is uh, a candle on the other side of the gravestone so it wasn't anything I manipulated or anything like that. So all in all I was pretty happy with this photo walk. Um, my expectations were probably a little bit higher than the results I got, but I'm still happy I did this photo walk. And as you've seen in this video, I mean I'm still a complete beginner when it comes to night photography. I haven't done it uh, much at all. So if you guys have any tips on how to take better night photography photos, uh, please uh, leave a comment uh, below and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. I will post more videos every week and please also give a like on this video if you liked it. <laughs> See you soon again.